Welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today, our guest is Susie Dent. Susie is a multi-award winning hair and makeup artist and a special effects artist in the film and television industry for over 30 years. She's an international award winning motivational speaker, an MC, and a funny lady. She recently transformed her life from tomboy to international beauty queen, being crowned Mrs. Earth Australia in 2017. Her work has been published all over the world and she's been seen on Australian TV shows and on radio promoting positivity, mindset, and age being just a number. Welcome to the show, Susie. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. How are you going? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and hand you the virtual microphone. The stage is now yours. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. How I'm so excited to be here and share some stuff with you today. I'm coming from, to you all the way from Australia. Um, it's a little bit chilly here today, which is great. But I wanted to talk to you um, about um, positivity and finding what your true passion is. And I know you're probably sitting there going, I don't know what my passion is. But um, when, you're, um, when you're young, uh, like you guys are, uh, you, uh, you, you, like to, you find the things that you like to do, like drawing and singing and dancing and running and um, writing and um, even watching movies like me, you know, working in the film and television industry. When you find a passion when you're young, right, you tend to, um, on your life path, you kind of move towards it, the things that you want to do. Uh, and that's uh, what's kind of called living your, your true purpose or your true passion when you hear things like that. But I want to tell you a story, right? So I'm a film and television hair and makeup artist. So I, I do, I'm a really creative person. I do pretty and ugly. So I like to make people look like they've gone through the, the windscreen of a car. I love to do zombies. So if you're into zombies, I am so your girl. If you're over here, Halloween, you and me, zombies. I love to teach that sort of stuff too, which is great. But being a makeup artist, my whole career, um, they don't, you just don't just learn everything at the beginning. You learn it as you go and you learn on the job, right? Um, and each time you're moving along, you work with people and you meet people that teach you stuff along the way. Um, and that's a bit like life, right? We're working and moving through life, it's a bit like a river, right? So imagine a river. There's this big river flowing through where we're all on our little, all on our little stepping stones, right? And we can stand on our stones alone um, and look around and see what's going on. Or we can put our hand out, put my hand out to you, uh, and grab the net and, and, and get help from the next person. Because in life, we always need help uh, to get us along the way, right? Um, and where I'm going with this is you never know who you're going to meet. Have you heard the old saying, um, it's not what you know, it's who you know? What that means is it's the people that you know and uh, that you influence by, you know, who you are that will help you along the way in life. Um, a lot of you are at the stage in your life where you're, you, you might have part-time jobs or uh, you're looking to get part-time jobs and you might think, um, oh, well, you know, it's just, just a bit of pocket money and it's just a means to an end. But I want to tell you a little story about my son, right? So my son's 18 now. His name's Jack. He was a drama student uh, and he worked in Woolworths part-time. You know, just uh, as, as a lot of you probably do, you know, in a supermarket. So Woolworths is a supermarket. So a part-time job in a supermarket. Any opportunity he got, he got to uh, go on the microphone and announce the meat specials and the specials and things. Uh, and people got to hear him over, over the, over the, uh, through the shop, right? And he has a great voice. And uh, so drama was his thing. So he's really good at speaking. But he jumped in and he was fearless and he took the opportunity to do it. He had these uh, customers that would come through and they would wait for him at his checkout, right? Um, especially the older customers who just loved spending time with him and having a chat because they'd hear him, right? Uh, one lady one day came up to him and told him that she worked at the local radio station. This was last year, right, when he was 17. And she invited him along to the radio station to come and meet them because in chatting, he'd told her how much he loves records and old things and retro things. And this station is a radio station that's directed at older people, so it plays all the golden oldie hits and music that he really likes and he's really into. So he went along to the radio station and met them and they offered him a position there, right? So they offered him a part-time part job at the radio station learning the ropes. Um, so he said yes. And he learned how to do producing um, and he learned how to uh, do announcing. And then uh, as he went on, um, after a month or so, the man who was working there was leaving 
and he got to take his job over and he got a um, offered a contract and now works there. He's on the air three times a week as an announcer uh, and uh, he's also a producer. They've given him uh, a, um, it's not university, it's a TAFE thing, so it's further education in film, screen and media. So all because he was, you know, he, he was, uh, he took the opportunity while he was at work and jumped on the microphone. Um, uh, was a little bit fearless. This, and he met this lovely lady, and he said yes to to going to the radio station. His whole life path changed. So when you meet people, always be nice to the people that you meet. All the adults, everybody. You never know who you might meet and who you might get to chatting to. You never know uh, where they're going to take you on your next stepping stone in life. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, we um, we're very excited about that. So always. Um, uh, be positive. You never know what's around the corner and you never know what's going to happen. But right now, if you're stuck at home and you're bored, there's a couple of things I want to teach you um, or just guide you with that is going to help you, right? Uh, once you've done your schoolwork, obviously, um, have a look at the things that you like, all right? Um, and if you're not quite sure, we all like watching movies, right? So have a look. What's your favourite movie? But when you're watching the movie, I want you have a, to have a look at the amount of work that goes into it. Have a look at the things that you're visually attracted to. Do you see the clothes that people are wearing? Do you see um, the car chases and the action and how they and the, how they make that happen? Do you see the blood and gore and the special effects? Do you see the actual actors and how they deliver their lines? The lighting, the sound. There's so many components. The actors themselves, you know, the story. There's so many components that go into making up a movie from the writing to the directing to the acting to the makeup and the wardrobe, uh, the stunts, the stunt people. So if you think about it, when you're watching a movie, there's hundreds of people, that's why there's so many credits at the end, that are involved in bringing this to life. Um, so if you look at that, you can eat. So when you look at a movie like that, I want you to have a, have a look at life like that. Think, what do I like? What do I like to look at? What, what interests me? And start following those interests that you've got, you know. Google. We've all got Google now. Have a look at it. What sort of job, what sort of job can I get if I like this? Where can I go in this sort of path, you know? Ask people. Even online, you can ask people. You, you, you contact them and tell them, hey, this is me. I'm 16 or I'm 15 or whatever and I'm really interested in doing your career. Can you give me a little bit of a guideline? I have young people contacting me all the time and I'm more than happy to give them a guideline and give them a path in and a bit of an idea of what the industry is like. So it's always good to put that hand out and ask people for help. And there's another thing I want to talk to you about that I'm really into, um, and it's called earthing and grounding. This is something you can do at home when it's not too cold. I know, what's that? Some of you might have already heard what this is, right? It's where you go outside and you take your shoes off and you walk barefoot on the grass, in the sand, on the dirt or in the water. And you scrunch your toes up and you do it for about half an hour. And the reason why you're doing it is you're connecting with the earth and the earth's actually energising you because electrons come up through the earth, not, nothing harmful, nothing bad, or good energy because Mother Earth is our friend. And it really energises you. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel happy. Being outside in the sunshine, getting vitamin D and earthing yourself in the ground and scrunching your toes and thinking about what you'd like to do with your life. Right, now this is called mindset, right? So you put yourself in a happy place. Um, first of all, one thing I've got to say, turn off the news, right? The, the world is so negative right now, you don't need to hear it. Turn it off. It's not going to change anything. It's boring. It's negative. Leave it alone. Walk away. You don't need to worry about it, right? Right now, you just don't need to worry about it. You just need to focus on yourself and your happiness and your joy. So while scrunching your toes, can you imagine it? Scrunching your toes. I go down a river. I have a river. I've got a dog. So I take her down the river and the river gets at low tide and it's about this deep and there's lots of sand and I scrunch my toes in the sand and on the water and it's really cool. And I feel really good after it and it's actually scientifically proven um, for pain relief to make you feel better. So Google earthing, all right? Uh, or it's even called barefoot healing. Um, and have a look and have an intro and, and give it a try. Just try, as long as it's not too cold. I don't think barefoot, barefoot uh, uh, healing in snow would be any good at all. It'd be too cold. Uh, so try that. And while you're out there, um, I want you to think about what you'd like to do with your future and what you'd like to do now. Um, and it's called manifesting and mindset, right? Now, that might say, you're like, what's, what's, mon what's mindset and what's manifesting? Well, remember when you were little and you used to play make-believe? 
and you're with your friends and you'd either dress up or not and you'd, and you'd, and you'd be in a castle and you'd be in this far off land and everything was amazing and you'd all be playing together or you'd be playing by yourself and you'd be full on in your head and you'd be so there, you're, you're the person in the castle and you're having huge adventures. Remember that? Remember how powerful that is and what amazing games you had when you were playing in your head? That's what manifesting is. Manifesting is believing in your head and that of the things that you want to do. So when you were a kid and you were doing all that stuff and having fun, and now you're a little bit older, um, I want you to think about what you want to do um, and, you, and put it in your head and really believe it. Work it out step by step. What do I want to do? Who do I want to be? What's my next step? And if you're not sure who you want to do, do it in little, very little things, you know. Just think about what you'd like, what you'd like the day to be like, what you'd like, what you'd like to happen, um, what you'd like, uh, what grades you'd like to get. And you can, you can manifest that. But you also have to work towards things, right? So I'll give you an example. I always know, right, that there's a car space available for me at the supermarket. I know, right? Right up in front. You always think, that nah, you're never going to park. Like, no, I always know. Do you know why? Because I believe that it's going to be there. Absolutely 100% believe that it's going to be there. I visualise the car space being empty at the front where I want it to be. Sure enough, pretty much it's there or almost there. It's nearly there and it's always there. So it's actually really powerful. Um, if you don't believe, um, sorry, if not, if you don't believe, we have a choice, right? We choose how we think. Uh, nobody else can choose for you how you think. You choose how you, how you feel. If you want to be in a bad mood, you'll choose to be in a bad mood. If you want to be in a good mood, you'll choose to be in a good mood. We choose what we say by what we think. So it's your choice, right? It's your choice what you do and how you feel. Um, and that's all under your control. So you can choose to be happy every single day and it's so much better than being sad. And it's so much more fun and you'll get so much more done. Take up drawing if you haven't done drawing. Give it a try while you're at home. If you're stuck at home, start singing. Sing. It doesn't even matter if you can't sing. But I'll tell you what, if you, if, well, you can shut the door somewhere, right? Have a really big sing, okay, to your favourite song. Beef it out. Full on, all the air up in your stomach. Roar! Right? After the end of singing one or two songs, you will feel so good. You will. Oh, your insides will feel good. You'll be full of joy until someone probably yells at you to shut up, but you know what I mean. Um, have a sing, all right? Put yourself in somewhere quiet and really get into it and have a sing. You can do it in the shower or anywhere, but uh, that will make you feel so much better and it will elevate your mood. It's actually proven to raise the dopamine levels in your brain, which is the feel-good stuff, and serotonin makes you feel good when you've had a really good sing. It's a great way uh, to um, put yourself in a really good mood straight away. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about um, the people that you meet, always being polite and always being mindful of people because you never know who you're going to meet. Focusing on your passions and figuring out what they are and trying new things, reaching out to other people on that stepping stone of life that we're all on uh, for, for a hand and for some advice to get you further on in life and turn off all the news and the negative stuff and go barefoot earthing. All right, so your task today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is take your shoes off, go and stand in the water, no, well, not the water, in the dirt, in the sand or on the grass and think happy thoughts. You can even, even do earthing and sing a song. I like to do that too. <laughs> what do you think, Tyler? <laughs> I, it's a great message. You know, it's funny when you talk about earthing, I, when I first heard about that, I thought it was like woo-woo, crazy stuff. And then I started reading the research and I was in particular interested because they recommend you do that as if you travel a lot, because when you travel, um, you have that thing called jet lag where you're really tired <laughs> and you have a hard time adjusting. But if you do earthing, it helps your body get back into the rhythm of the earth and you sleep better. And so the, it's been recommended that you do it, like you mentioned, a half hour every day. And yeah. it does help you with pain and it helps you with sleep better. And there's a lot of other benefits and they're all scientifically proven. It sounds crazy, but it's all science based. It's really cool. So it's great, isn't it? And it's so easy. We can all do it. Yeah. So easy. Cost you nothing. Uh, but it does. It really, I, I find it very, um, it's a great place. I, I get meditative. I actually do walk in a river at low tide, mm -hmm. um, which is great. 
and it's um, it's a magical place, which is wonderful. Uh, and I do, I think it's it's great. It's really been helpful for me, my son, my husband. He was depressed for a while, um, and uh, he like everything really helped him. Cool. Keeps him keeps him in his happy place. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'd like to get into a little bit of your story. As you talked about stepping stones and doing things where you met people and had relationships that led to other things. I wonder if we can go back in time and think about the opportunities you've had. You've had an interesting career uh, as a hair and a makeup artist. And as you've gone through your career, have you, can you trace back, um, you know, having relationships and talking to certain people and having that open doors for you later on in your life? Oh, look, um, I sure can. It was amazing. Uh, I actually had my first job when I was 12. Um, I worked in a hairdressing salon. They had an ad up for a, a part-time person. This is a long time ago, you know, before right. mobile phones, back in the olden days. Um, and they didn't ask me if I was like 14 or 15 and I looked um, older for my age. Uh, so I didn't tell them. And I worked Thursday nights and Saturday mornings and they taught me uh, shampooing and taking perm rods out and they'd answer the phone, sweep the floor, everything. Until somebody um, a few months later, I don't know who, uh, dobbed me in and told them that I was 12 because it was against <laughs> the law, apparently. I didn't know that, you know. But it, it, it ignited my passion for working with hair. They became my first, like, mentors, if you like, because every time I went in there um, to have a haircut, they'd teach me things. They'd let me stay there. They'd show me things um, because they knew that I, I loved it. I didn't know as well as they did, but it was going to be my entire career, you know, and something that right. I, I was so passionate about. Because um, a lot of the time adults will see things in kids, you know, that we don't know when we're young. And uh, I took kind of a sideways step when I finished school and worked uh, in a bank, because a lot of people did back then after they'd finished high school, but only for two years. And I went travelling and discovered there was this thing called a makeup artist, because I didn't know back then. Uh, and uh, I got into, uh, my father actually got me into a school uh, which is the only one in the entire country. And uh, I came back home from England and started school and walked into this place and thought, I'm home, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, so I trained as a makeup artist for a year. It's a theatrical arts course, wigs, special effects, working with hair, glamour, stage. Back then there was, there was 35 millimetre film, there was video, there was stage and every single aspect was a different type of makeup, like entirely different, which was great. Now everything's digital. So it's all different, but it's all kind of one, one type. Um, so the, the makeup has morphed over the years, which is good. Uh, so, I, look, I struggled. I worked as, a, as a, a waitress for years while I was building up my career and my name as a, as a makeup artist. And, and then you'd meet people um, when I'd work on jobs and then they'd recommend you for the next job. And, you know, they gave me the hand up and, 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 and that's how it kind of happened, you know. I ended up getting one job um, for a big production company um, doing a game show, which was great fun because I worked with lots of celebrities and sporting stars. And then I went back to Channel 10, 9 and 7 that I'd been to before and they gave me a job because I had worked for, I worked for this company, you know. That's how doors open. And um, my career just kept going. I, I, I kept working at it. I kept learning. I taught myself hairdressing, uh, hairstyling. I had a, um, a dolly head. And I had it uh, strapped to my, uh, hooked onto my coffee table and I would work on it every day and I'd work through a wedding book of wedding styles and I would teach myself how to build styles. Um, every day I worked on it and, and um, I, I became an award-winning hairstylist, uh, making avant-garde styles, big, huge, arty creations uh, that have been published around the world because of my passion. Uh, when you are passionate about something, you know, you've got to keep working at it. Um, I've had so many interesting opportunities uh, that I've said yes to within my career. Uh, and that's the thing when you're in, you, you've got you got to kind of be fearless, you know. I got I had a producer once who sent me this little piece of paper, and he said, "Oh, Susie, do you think you could do this?" And it was a a, a person. It was a, like a wig on somebody's chin, upside down, with two eyes and a mouth. And they turned the person around, and they made it a talking chin character. Um, and he said, "Do you think you can make these chins?" And I went, "Oh, okay, I'll give it a go." Anyway, it turned into this massive campaign for the Leukemia Foundation, uh, a huge national Australian campaign um, every year that's raised millions of dollars. I did the, the characters for nine years. Every year was, was hard. It started off quite basic. By the last year, I'd, I'd created full head puppets with full, full, full bodies. They, they became bodies with arms and legs and puppeteers working the arms and legs while these people hung upside down and talked and stuff. 
but it raised millions of dollars. It's amazing. It's, it's, and, and that's like, it's not makeup or hair. It's like just this creative thing. So whatever we do, we've always got to be um, really open to widen what we do and always push yourself out of your comfort zone to test other things, you know? Yeah. Um, now, as, as you've worked as a, a makeup artist and as a hairdresser, um, you've been in the industry, in the entertainment industry for a, a while now. Do you have a favorite project or a favorite thing that you did um, that you've worked on over the last several years? Um, that would have, that one would have to be my favorite as far as the creativity involved in how far I pushed myself. Right. Um, but, oh, look, I've, I've worked on MTV. I've worked with four, prime, four of our prime ministers. I've met the most amazing um, entertainers and singers. I've worked with some, well, some of the best actors in our country. Uh, and being able to spend time with people like that, I, I get to talk to them. As a makeup artist, we touch people, you know? So we invade your space. We're the last, I mean that in a nice way. Uh, we're the last people that see them before they go on camera. Right. So our vibe and their, you know, it's important that I'm in the right mood. I mean, I'm not gonna talk about my dog dying before, you know, the Prime Minister's gonna give a, a message to the nation, you know? And it right. suck, wouldn't it? But I get to spend time with people. I used to work on this um, drama called Home and Away, um, which is really pop popular here and in England, I don't know, a few other countries. Um, and um, I get to have fun, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd play, we'd be doing Grease in the bus at lunchtime. So I had really amazing times with people, but I got to learn from all of them that uh, with whatever you do, you always have to push yourself. Right. You always have to strive for more. Uh, sometimes, you know, with anything, you, you, you often have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, and when you do, you, you, you grow and you learn and you just become more of you as you, as you go. So yeah, well, it's, so um, let's, Let's talk about that for a minute and we can wrap with this question. One of the cool things that you've done is push yourself and continue to do new things. And just recently you've gotten into the beauty pageant arena and, and went out for, for Miss Earth in, in 2017. Tell us just a little bit about that, why you decided to do it and some of the experience you had with that. Oh, look, you know, I was, just, I, was, I was at a stage of my life where life wasn't really good. I wasn't really happy. Um, my husband was depressed. Things weren't great. Um, and I needed to make a change in my life. And um, I put out a message to the, to the universe that I actually I thought, okay, I want to be in front of the camera rather than behind the camera for a change. So, uh, and all of a sudden, two weeks later, I got a call from this woman um, on Messenger saying um, she'd seen me, um, my profile as a hair and makeup artist. And she said, we think you'd be a really good fit for the Mrs. Earth Australia pageant. And I nearly fell off the bed laughing. Um, and I got back to her and I said, oh, thank you so much, darling. That's really nice. But um, I don't wear dresses because I'm a tomboy. And uh, well, I'm 55. And she said, no, 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 55-year-olds go in it. And I looked at what, had, what she sent me and uh, I checked them out. Um, and for me, I've, I was a tomboy my entire life. I never wore dresses. It made me feel really, really uncomfortable. I, I dressed down since I was a teenager for many reasons. But I had body issue problems. Um, but I was at this really, this crossroads in my life. So I, I, I could, I had, I had a choice. I was in two doors. I could stay where I was, where I was kind of miserable, or I could say yes to this opportunity that involved me doing something that I never, ever, ever dreamed of doing, going into pageant, raising money and awareness for a charity. So I said yes. Uh, and I uh, embraced the whole thing. Uh, I, I like to say I conquered my fear of, um, of, of uh, my psychological fear of frocks one dress at a time. Um, I had an amazing time. I found a business. Uh, they just thought it was amazing. This, this older woman doing what I was doing. I, I got a business that sponsored me. I had national press and I started a campaign all around the country for a charity called souls for souls who collects new and new shoes for people here and I was well, mainly overseas for people who don't have one. Um, it was an amazing ride. I went to Melbourne. I competed against, against women who I could have given birth to who were half my age, <laughs> you know, and I'm not, I'm really normal, right? I'm not into, I've never done Botox or God, no. So I don't do anything like that. I'm very normal. So, so I had to learn how to work, walk in high heeled shoes. I'd stand at the end of my bed and I'd just stand there and practice because they were really high because I was so used to wearing runners. Right. But I, I, but I did it and I did it and I, I won Mrs. Earth Australia, the first Mrs. Earth Australia, found myself in Vegas um, in uh, July of 2017, 2018. Uh, and competing against 36 women from around the world who had all uh, competed in their states to get to represent the country. It was huge. Turned out it was like, the, I think, the fourth biggest pageant system in the world. Um, so I didn't choose anything dinky. 
Uh, I went over there. I did my thing. I had an amazing time. Met amazing women. I came third runner up in the world, um, which was huge. I was the oldest competitor by a long shot, um, but age didn't matter. Because the thing is, is, age is just a number. It doesn't matter what your age number is. If you have the confidence to do something and you step outside your com your comfort zone and you do things, you can achieve whatever you want, even young. You know. Yeah. So the age thing, it doesn't matter what age you are. You just go for it. So I did. Uh, look, I came. I got off the plane to being on Morning Sunrise here, which is a huge show. Um, I was on national television on all our morning breakfast shows. I've been women's magazines. Um, my whole life, my career changed. I'm a motivational speaker. I've been to India. I've won awards for speaking and motivating women and changing people's lives, all because I changed my own life and put on a, put on a dress, if you like. But it really <laughs> did. It changed my soul. It changed my life. I had a lot of confidence before, but I didn't have self-esteem. And confidence and self-esteem aren't the same things. You can fake being confident, but you can't fake having no self-esteem. So now my levels are just as my, my self-esteem is just as far as my confidence. My husband um, is amazing. He's better now. I changed our life because I changed our world because I stepped outside of my comfort zone. So you never know. You know, when you take a risk and take that step, you can change your life path to something absolutely amazing. Right. So, so awesome that you were able to do that. And, and I'm, I mean, as you shared your advice earlier on and about all the things other people can do, obviously you're doing those things in your own life and seeing awesome results. Um, as the kids um, watch this and, and some might want to follow what you're doing or connect with you, where can they find you online? Online, so you can find me at Facebook if you're on Facebook, uh, Susie Dent Hair and Makeup Artist. Uh, you can find me, and Susie, S-U-Z-I-D-E-N-T. Uh, and you can find me on Instagram, which is Susie, S-U-Z-I-H-M-U-A, for hair makeup artist. Uh, you can find me there. All right. Well, and you can you find so me on, much. and then, uh, yeah, that's oh. great. Thank you. It's been lovely talking to you, Tyler. Thank you so very much. And thank you, everybody, for listening to me.